professor boy Kari at the time had many friends around the world. Many of them were world leaders. Many of them were people that were just simple farmers on the ground. Today we have a message from a former world leader, a former president of the United States. I'm sorry I can't join you tonight in Durban, but I thank the Avoided Deforestation Partners and Dr. Jane Goodall for hosting this important event. First, I extend my deep appreciation for the legacy of my friend Wangari Matai. I worked with her many times at the Clinton Global Initiative. I know what a pioneer and a visionary she was. I know how inspiring she could be to all of us. Like Wangari and Dr. Goodall, I also know the future of our planet depends on healthy, standing forests that not only provide water and healthy environments, but also help us to fight one of the greatest threats of the 21st century climate change. We must protect our forests while ensuring food security and development. We must support countries that are taking action to reduce deforestation. Tonight, we celebrate Wangari Matai's vision to prevent deforestation and to protect our environment. I am glad that Avoided Deforestation Partners is continuing her invaluable work with her indomitable spirit. Thank you so much. So just to be clear, <laughs> Professor Matai played a huge role in helping us galvanize groups around the United States, both NGOs and businesses, to really send a message to our leaders. But it really is the Green Belt Movement, which, Matar, which Professor Matai founded and started, and is continuing to this day, stronger than ever, with the guidance of her daughter, Wanjira Matai. So we thank all of you for being here to do the work that you do, but it really took people who were really great at convening organizations, and that was one of the strengths of Wangari Matai. We have another message that we had to, just simply had to share with you. It was a message that was uh, prepared by our friends at C4 and just recently shown at Forest Day. It really reflects on Wangari's life and what she really accomplished in many ways. Um, we thought that this would be an important and, a, and appropriate forum to show that clip. So I'd like to sort of bring it to all of you today and, and show it. Thank you. People do not know how much they depend on the survival of this ecosystem. So when people say they want to come in and cultivate, or they want to come in and grow commercial plantations, I know that they are stealing their own graves. She blazed a trail for women's rights, for democracy, 
and most of all, for a green environment. And her desire that we plant a billion trees has got to be taken on by all her friends so that it is achieved in the very near future. The movement started with a tree planting campaign, but it was a lot more than just the planting of trees. It gave people a reason to stand up for their rights. Their environmental rights, their women's rights, and their human rights. The real, real grassroots people, they can change this world. Initially, the women's groups were ignored because nobody took them seriously. But soon the government realized that the women were being organized and becoming more and more powerful. In 1992, Wangari organized a hunger strike in Gold Park to push the government to release political prisoners. The women, attacked by the police, refused to give up and continued their protest for 11 months. Moi's government finally conceded to their demands and released the prisoners. When President Moi was discovered to be giving away public land, parts of Karua Forest, to politicians in his government, Wangari decided to fight the development. Wangari, afraid, decided to protest peacefully through a tree planting mission. She never did anything to please. She never did anything because she wanted to be popular. She did everything she did because she always felt it was the right thing to do. That was a constant in her life. It's a very sad saga that we have a government in this country that is actually overseeing the destruction of forests and the grabbing of public land. If you're going to shed blood because of our land, we will. We are used to that. Our forefathers shed blood for our land. We will do so. This is my blood. And I, it, it reminds me of the blood that Wayaki shed trying to protect Kaduna Forest. Her indomitable spirit enabled her to transcend barriers of every kind and description to inspire the rest of us to walk in her footsteps. The peace we don't have quite often in many places is because we have destroyed these resources. Sometimes we are just violent against each other. Human beings is a strange species because sometimes it stands on itself and destroys itself. Wangari <clears throat> was the first African woman and the first environmentalist to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. She was involved in the struggles for human rights, democracy, and environmental conservation. She was a true leader in those areas and an absolutely worthy winner of the Nobel Prize. It is the people who must save the environment. It's the people who must make their leaders change. So we must stand up for what we believe in. And we cannot be intimidated. <laughs>